Okay, today's video we're going to talk about a little thing called web beacons. And if you're finding this because you want to know how to make money with them, that's you're, you're in luck. This is exactly what I'm going to share with you on today's video. Multiple ways actually to make money with web beacons. Whether you have a business, whether you want to start a business, completely centered around web beacons. You here want a free money making opportunity. This opportunity is live and well for people. Generally, as they say, if if everybody could do it, everybody would do it. There wouldn't be a way to make money from it anymore, or very little. Well, that's true. I can tell you for a fact, almost nobody knows about this method. Yet there's very strong demand at the same time, strong unmet demand for people, uh, basically brokers who use web beacons to facilitate commerce for people that already have businesses selling a product or service already anyway. So depending on where you're at, want to make a little bit more money or just want to find a totally new separate business that has tons of potential, I'm going to give you information about both on today's video to literally mint cash for your business, take something and make it something from nothing. Mint cash. Okay. So anyway, with all that out of the way, I'm going to get into the meat here. I'll tell you a little bit more about the background of why people use the beacons. Then I'll get into the money making strategies after that. And basically how much you can make with each one of these strategies if you do it, as well as different instances where I've actually used it myself and actually made money from it. So anyway, first of all, while businesses use a web beacon for tracking, uh, tr for tracking in-house marketing campaigns, generally what they're doing is they're using it to track. You have a business, you have uh, people online, online PPC, P you know, running PPC ads, and they're using it so that they could advertise people online and draw, drive them to a, a offline business and know if that online PPC ad worked. Or they're doing, they're marketing offline, okay? It could be offline in general or, you know, pretty much you're, you're marketing inside the store, the physical store, physical brick and mortar store, and you want to be able to do stuff that's going to drive them online from a known physical location. So I'm not talking about tracking a newspaper ad, whether that works or not, to see if they came online, which there's different kind of methods for that. That's not quite as robust or as good. I'm talking about if you at a, uh, basically a lot of times you're talking about physical location, a storefront that you already have. You wanna run a promotion to get people online and you wanna know if that promotion or way you were trying to do it inside your physical store to get them online worked or not. And so a way that you do this is most of the time for the best way anyway to do it is what is through what is called using web beacon. So web beacon to get, first of all, explain a little bit better what this is, is a, it, it's a physical device that you stick on the wall. You could Google it, see images of it. It looks like a rock. It's there to disguise itself. So you don't know it's tracking you basically, but it is tracking every single person who walks by it who has a mobile device. It's tracking and pulling the mobile user ID as it connects through Bluetooth. So basically your mobile device is all the time trying to find other mobile uh, web beacons or, or other things to connect to. I don't know if that's the exact best way of saying that. But as you know, you can go into your Bluetooth settings on your phone and you can see all the potential things to connect to with your phone, right? With the, So this beacon is set up just to be another so-called device then for your phone to connect to. As it's trying to connect, it can pull your mobile user ID. And once it pulls your mobile user ID and stores it on a database, you could use that mobile user ID for later forensics and track whether or not somebody who later on used that same had a phone or used the phone to do something else in which you check and grab their mobile user ID there to, and through the power of being able to match those user IDs up, you can see if it's the same person that went past that web beacon that you set up, that, that rock, that 
is there to collect your mobile, mobile user ID in the first place, which in this case, what we were talking about would be at a physical store. They walked by it, it grabbed their mobile user ID. That same person with the same mobile device, two weeks later, went to a, your website, a website that you own, whatever, and bought something in which their mobile user ID will be grabbed then, now you don't know for sure whatever you did to try to attempt, if you're trying to attempt people in that store where the, the beacon is, the web beacon is, to get them to come online to purchase, actually directly res, you know, cause them to go online and make a physical purchase online in that two week time period from the time that they strolled past that web beacon in your store where it's at and your website to make that purchase. But you can in general draw conclusions, strong conclusions as to, uh, assuming that it's just like white, right in the walkway where most people put it, that, that you did something that likely could have caused or inspired that person to go online and make a purchase. Respectively, if you, through the technology that you have through your website, you can see if it's a first purchase or not, then you know somebody, you know, within 30 days, if that person strolled by the mobile beacon and then later on they purchased, but they never purchased online before within 30 days time, you could dr draw the conclusion that whatever you were doing, as long as it was fairly blatant, like you had a poster up that says you were going to give them something if they went on and used their and actually purchased online uh, within the next month, that that promotion worked. Or at least, at least you, you have the capability then to do that for a month with the poster on the wall. Then you could take the poster away and then see how much your online new user activity went down to directly kind of correlate or figure out if the poster was able to successfully convince people to go online and purchase online through your website than they were before and then you know subtract you know with the poster or without and then now you know how much that poster actually got people to purchase online so as a as a side thing you could put your mobile beacon if you had the the, the offline brick and mortar business on a whole nother level of the buildings. And you, so then you know people that stroll past that, 90% of people don't stroll past that. And it'd be an easier way to see if you wanted to work quite sure if what your poster got people to come online or not, you know, because you're separating out the traffic, if you will. Okay. Um, this is a quick side note. But so the mobile beacons, in essence, though, allow you to grab the mobile user ID from, a, from some person in person as they walk past the device in a known location. So, and so you can tell if somebody's walked by a certain area and who, are, who, they're, what, who they were, or at least their mobile user IDs, which don't tell you who they are. But later on, if you pick up, you know, it could be another physical location even where another mobile beacon is. If you picked up the mobile user ID there, you could tell that the same person uh, walked past both beacons or if they purchase online which at the same time of purchasing something online obviously they have to leave their first and last name and their email address now you know john smith who purchased walked past the, the the web beacon two weeks ago like my previous example that i gave you and that it was john smith there because you you got john smith on the on the purchase later on where you grabbed the same mobile user id if you could get their just their email address on, on when they made the purchase and not their full name, you could use the email address alone to go to, and there's uh, what they call data enhancement or extension brokers that will be able to tell you the person's name just by their email address, of course, uh, just as a side. But so you basically then, uh, because you've got their mobile user ID and knew what their name there was, any other time they walk past any other beacon where you just got their mobile ID, you know it was the same person and you know physically who it was. Okay, that's what, in essence, what these mobile beacons are, are for. Uh, but more specifically, it's to be able to see if people that were doing something offline came online for what, you know, to, you know basically, it could be for any purpose, but for most people are they're using to see if they could do marketing offline in a physical spot that they are, have physical presence to get them online to do something you wanted them to do online, i.e. buy online, whatever. Or it's for somebody who are advertising online and they want to do something to try to get them to purchase offline. And um, 
you, in that case, would grab the, the, the user's information online, download a coupon, whatever thereof, uh, or, or something thereof, and then as they go offline to purchase in the store, you may not get their information on the checkout, but they walk past the beacon, and because you got the, their personal information and their user mobile ID, because the time in which they had to opt in for the, the, pr the promotion to get their discount or whatever offline, they had to give their personal name there, and so that later on when they go to the physical location, you know, that, you know, John Smith basically was there because his mobile ID was picked up, and that's the same mobile ID that's tied to John Smith from our online purchase uh, or, you know, online download of, of a special coupon code that you were, or discount that you were going to give them offline if they went ahead and went to your physical location to purchase uh, later on. Respectively, in that situation where you're having them down, you know, John Smith wants to take you up on your promotion of having a 10% discount on their first purchase at your physical brick and mortar location. If they go ahead and they fill out a form, you can find out John Smith and as well as everybody who fills it out, fills it out and grab their mobile user ID because it's not that difficult to do using a script. When they go in physically to your store, they'll walk past the beacon. You don't know for sure if that person purchased, okay? As long as some people obviously offline, if you're like, if you remember like going into uh, Radio Shack um, years ago, where they'd always, if you buy a pack of batteries, they would ask your information. In that case, obviously you know for sure that they that they not only requested a special um, uh, coupon code or whatnot to get a discount on your offline uh, in your offline store that you were trying to do online to get them in there, but um, at least you'll draw enough data so that they know if they walk past that beacon, they probably came in and purchased because if they don't, aren't normally in there and they go into your store and you have a retail outlet, they're not there probably for any other reason, you'll know if they purchased or not. Or like I said, you have enough of a, draw enough of a conclusion there that you can begin to start split testing ads that get them to the form that offers them the offline promotion in the first place. So respectively, you can have, you know, online, you have your customers that go online to buy certain things, and then you can run ads to get them back to your store and specifically to a landing page that offers them a, dis a discount for buying offline. You may not want to push everybody to that landing page. You'll, you'll push everybody to the landing page in the first place, but based upon the traits of the, of the people that you find end up actually in the physical store, in the future, instead of pushing everybody to that landing page, you could push just the people with the certain traits that you know are worth it and still profitable to do for you at the end of the day. Hopefully that all makes sense in how this stuff actually works. I haven't found anywhere that actually lays it out in such a way to understand fully how this technology works and why people use it. Okay, so that's in general kind of what people are using it for, the main use cases. There's this other use case though that I don't see anybody talking about anywhere, and that is you could they these web beacons can also be used to build marketing lists and or pr prospecting lists as well. So the beacon itself, what I talked about so far here, is about for tracking, the tracking success your your ad campaigns and your promotions to see if certain promotions can get people to go online or offline and in general use that data to refine the, your marketing that push them to that promotion. So it's add, you know, offer, and then did they go ahead and finish what they were supposed to do to weed out traffic that shouldn't go to your offer in the first place to get the discount code and then hopefully end up purchasing to, to refine an ad campaign that's supposed to get more people to come online and buy or offline and buy. You can use the web beacon to build a list of people to market to in general. So like the, what I gave, explained to you before is kind of just for marketing purposes uh, where you would see people using this stuff. Um, but it doesn't have to be. You can use ads to drive in new, uh, totally new people who have never seen you, never dealt with you before. And when they go, you know, obviously, in the way that I said it before, if they were you know, online people, you could say, hey, here's a form to get a 10% discount offline for somebody who hasn't bought from you online yet. That's not a common use case. 
if you're gonna drive new traffic or try to get new customers all together using the power of these web beacons, it's to build a list of people which you will then later on market to, of which you're building a list with the web beacon because you can get very granular data about certain, because you know if people have certain traits, they're like 10,000 times more likely to buy than the average person out walking the street, in which you could use that information then to power ad campaigns in itself that are so targeted in terms of how well you can target using so you know the power of um, you basically uh, you're creating prospecting lists and general lists of people to market to that it'll work every time and which you can't get any other way by advertising online because obviously if you're advertising online the targeting only gets so targeted you can see if a person went to high school you can see if a person's been interested in electronic bicycles uh, or new bicycles or whatever, but what you can have is you can't see specifically somebody who was recently in a store looking for a bicycle, and if that's what you want, with the web beacons, you can absolutely do that, which you can't get done any other way. Online, you can see if they went to an online website about you know buying bicycles, but if you wanted to get somebody who was, look, you were looking at people that were looking at bicycles offline, the web beacon is where uh, you could or you can track you, you could target people the same way people that were doing offline actions for your online ad campaigns if you get my kind of drift there and so I say marketing list because you, because you could create a list of people who which if you sell bikes you definitely want people who come into your physical store that were looking at bikes there in one of maybe many locations that you have. So you can, if they did not buy, you can market online and maybe just get them to come back to the store and finish their purchase or just to go online and, and do their purchase there. That, that's marketing list. Prospecting lists would be actual lists, which you know, and if they're in your physical store looking for a bike, you know that they're, and you sell bikes, you have immediate use for that list because you want to market the, the heck out of those people to get them to you know finish their purchase or just make, make sure you, they have the highest likelihood of making a purchase from you as possible. Maybe you uh, have a promotion that says 10% off this month only, and you have another thing that says how, why uh, the mongoose bikes that we sell are better than anything else. So if you're kind of right in the fence whether to buy or not, that'll help push them over the edge on more on a statistical basis. These prospecting lists would be like, um, I know, you, you find out, if you don't know it already, you prospect and you find out all, what are the traits our normal customers have that are no different than any other traits that are out there, basically. Um, one example out there is um, it, 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 like the mail order bride space, bride space uh, read a case study where the, if, in terms of the traits of the, uh, uh, the, that were more common, if you added them up together, that, that was matching their typical customer than anybody else was guys who were truckers <laughs> and were divorced three times. If you could find a list of people who were both of those things together, it was an absolute slam dunk selling to them. Any advertising you could get in front of them to, to sell to them because they're so, you know, the 10,000 times more likely to buy thing comes in that you want, you once you get that list, you send them letters, you everywhere online you can get in front of them and you to not bore them to death you have 20 30 different ads that can rotate out for that person you do everything you can to get them to your site because now you know that they're going to buy if you could just get them to your site so you, you try everything because it'll be worth it so instead of going after a wide swath of people who maybe are interested in you know getting a mail or bride maybe not you go after the one percent of that list which where 80% of the purchases come from, and then you just nail that. And so that's what these prospecting lists are. Uh, sometimes you could find out, like with the example I gave you, three times divorced trucker, there's data brokers out there which can give you a list of just truckers by profession, which are then filtered down by uh, divorce three times and get you a list out of where they're starting with, um, you know, 100 million people, they could get you a list of 1,500 people who meet those certain requirements. You can upload those email lists, which is, can come in an email list. 
uh, or cell phone numbers. It also works too. And you can then upload through a custom audience, create a custom audience on Facebook, create a custom audience on AdRoll, and start to have banner ads that will show up for those people. Now you know if you can just get them to click on your ad, you'll make money on those 1,500, and then you do everything you can just to get those 1,500 to reply. There are some instances where you're trying to find that you know 10,000 times higher, most more likely to buy from you list, if you will. Uh, you have to do it. You have to data mine in a different way. It has to be some action that they did, and that action sometimes is stuff something that your typical customer with the typical traits that buy way more than anybody else is something that they've done that you can identify, or just something that they do that makes them unique offline which could be if you're a personal injury lawyer, um, you know, everybody knew back in the day that ambulance chasers, as they call them, if somebody got in a wreck, lawyers would go to the, the wreck because th that's where the people who are gonna be buying from were. If you're gonna put efforts into marketing, that's where you start. So they weren't dumb and then there was laws against that. And, but then you find, okay, the, the, the same thing, if you can find out somebody who is near the accidents, assuming that it was always in one place where everybody always wrecked, now you've got something that can make a huge amount of money because those are exact people that are gonna buy. And then if here's a way you could advertise to all the people who got in an accident in the last 30 days, you would be freaking rich, obviously, just combining the power of PPC, which with PPC, you're guaranteed to get in front of any everybody because everybody uses the web and through ad roll, which can get you basically almost on every site that has banner advertising on virtually, not all, but virtually. And through Facebook, you're gonna make sure to get in front of them. So if you, I, I highly recommend if you're, I mean, search engine advertising is one thing, but display advertising, trying to get people to respond to you by video ads or banner ads, you know, i.e. PPC that's not on ser the search engines themselves, Google and Bing, you start with trying to figure out what your unique traits are that are absolute slam dunk for your business. If you could just speak to them, you know they would buy. And, um, and run your PPC campaigns that, that way using custom audiences, custom email lists uh, to create custom audiences and then go that direction first. You just have to figure out what those traits are. And with that, if you, you know, sometimes the traits that make them unique, like I said, in the, in the uh, personal injury space, is it gonna be all the same place? But if you think a little harder, a little bit longer, you know, you might be able to find something in the personal injury space. With one of my clients, it was somebody who was near a helipad. Obviously, if you have that, you're gonna, you probably got in an accident at least 10% of the time, which if you could find some, somebody that's gonna buy 10% of, of the time out of any list that you construct, any PPC online is gonna work for you, okay? You wanna then get on Taboola, uh, Facebook, AdRoll, LinkedIn, anywhere you, that will accept your email list at that point. And then you could start making money from there and then you could start to you know branch out from there, but why not go where all the money is first? Anyway, I think you get the general idea uh, what prospecting lists are. There are. You could use those prospecting lists for your business, but you could also sell those pro prospecting lists because the lists themselves, it's some markets like personal injury, are worth 10 bucks a lead. Just knowing the email address of somebody who's, who was near a helipad is worth 10 bucks. So if you wanted to start a business doing, you know, in, a, in the advertising field, data, data, broker, dro, data brokering field, you create some way to put a beacon next to the helipad and you, each mobile ID that you pick up can be worth 10 bucks, you know, easily. Why? Because the average case size is $150,000. They can afford to pay 10 bucks for a mobile ID for somebody that they know for a fact is near a helipad. So you don't even have to have a business where you can use the leads. You could just think of, if you're smart enough, you can think of a use case like I gave you there, use the web beacons, which this is a legal gray area. I'm not advising you to do this. You need to check with what's legal and what's not in a lot of different spaces. What you can't do, what you can do, sometimes you have to violate you know, privacy laws to do it. Uh, respectively, or you, you, where you're putting it, the device, uh, maybe legal in some places and sometimes not. I can just tell you this stuff works like, like freaking amazing. Okay, so what your appetite for risk is, that's up to you to decide. You, but you can, a lot of times, because 
the, the lists are so valuable, you can just go to somebody and say, hey, who's your best customer? And then, okay, figure out a way to get the beacon to pick up names in front of the person and type of the leads, the slam dunk prospects that I mentioned before that are 10,000 times more likely to buy than the average person out in the, out in the real world. And tell them that you can set up an ad campaign along with the list of names and you can market to that person who's been on the helipad. You know ahead of time how much that's going to work. And then now you can start to sell per lead or you could sell the list itself if they already have ad uh, campaigns up. You could say, if you had people that were, instead of people in general, if you had people that were near a helipad, it would work better, right? Right. Okay, well, if I could get you a list of people that, you know, in the last 30 days were doing that, would you pay for that? Yeah, I would. They'll pay you. Obviously, it works. And once the beacon's there, it's always going to update the list for you automatically. Now you've got an automated way to make money. Go to the next person, the next person, the next person. So it's an interesting opportunity for somebody out there who would want to do that. Uh, because people, even if you gave them the strategy, they probably wouldn't want to do it. But respectively, you don't even have to tell them how you're getting the names. If it's profitable enough, they won't ask questions. I'll, I'll promise you that. Or you know, not like you think they would. So anyway, there's the basic use cases of these web uh, beacons. As far as somebody in the ad space, I've personally seen it how they work, how well they work, that kind of thing. What I'll get into now is basically, given that you can now target people uh, offline and or understand if somebody went offline to make a purchase, I'll tell you the type of PPC ads that go along with those prospecting lists or um, you know the people that you can pick up that have done an offline action to actually start making money and which I've actually done for our clients here. So you can actually have a turnkey way to make money from this stuff and the web beacons right away for your business or a business you'd like to start. So first of all, out of the three kind of uh, methods here that I'll give you, I talked about how you would use the web beacons to track and to make remarketing campaigns work, i.e. people who've been to your site before or they may or may not be a customer yet, you want to market to them again to either get them to finish getting off the fence and buying for the first time or buy again. So what I would do a lot of times is the person would go into one of the many physical locations that we have and then we would have a promotion in store, right? That, uh, excuse me, online. So we would build a web beacon that would pick up the, the mobile user IDs from people who walked into the store. We put a beacon for, in each location and then online would show up an ad, that basically the general uh, premise of the pitch on the ad itself, which the pitch on the ad is just as important as the list, still, even not good, no matter how targeted you, that list is, open an account today and get a free item, $50 purchase limit. So if you sell, let's say, luxury clo um, clothing, like a Neiman Marcus or something like that, which is close to kind of what we were doing here, if they're well, a frequent customer offline and you want them to start buying online because they'll buy more if they're going to be buying online and offline. Why? Because it's you have to have time to go into an offline store. So you could identify what a customer overall to your company is worth if they buy just offline versus online versus both. And then once you know that number, you can identify how much you could pay to get an offline customer to become an online customer which then with your tracking, it just comes down, can I hit my number or not? To be able to raise the amount of money you could make from you know, the customers you already have in general. And then you put your beacons on in the, uh, within the, the walkway of your different physical locations. If you have offline locations and you're trying to get them to come online and then your ad says, give them a free item to get them to actually buy the first time. Cause the hardest part by far is that someone in that instance or situation to buy the first time? Because once they bought the first time, guess what? All their information saved. That's why Amazon, you can't compete with Amazon for everyday items that don't require any real customer service because the friction's so much less. I just have to go there, click buy, and I'm done. No entering my address, none of that crap. It's also predictable and fast, but in general, you have a, people don't understand. I have to risk giving my information to somebody that I've never dealt business with and I have to physically do it. People hate filling out forms. 
There's a study that shows people would really clean a toilet on average and then fill out a form. So if you didn't know, that's what it is. And so if you, if you want them to buy the first time, you know if, if it's gonna be, you, you can make an, on average $300 more lifetime from a customer uh, than somebody who just was offline, then giving them a $25 free item just to buy the first time, it's worth it. And because the offer is so good, that your advertising cost, by the way, will be almost nothing because your click-through rate on that will be like a percent or higher for a regular banner ad on other websites or like three or four percent on Facebook. And so basically, whereas you have to give a $25 item away because the offer is so good, you have to pay like a dollar worth of advertising cost to get the actual person to make the purchase. So what you're saving in advertising costs, you can usually just put that towards your, your offer there of your free item and it just, it, it works better than trying to say, please buy us from us from the first time, but there, oh, sorry, there's no actual reason why uh, that you should. So anyway, in that particular instance, once they see the ad and physically click on it, you'll have one to 10% conversion rate on what you're doing right away, which is numbers you usually only get if the person's already in market for what you have and they're ready to buy now. Whereas they might be reading an article on CNN, they see an ad like this, you can get them to buy at that, those kind of rates, just like other traffic that are like from search engine traffic that you would only get there. So respectively, to make this work as a byproduct of this, you spend a big money to get them to buy from the fir for the first time. You already know that if, in general, if they buy the offline people buy online, instead of just offline, you can make an additional $300 on average lifetime value from those people. You'll make more than the 300, by the way, if you have a whole system behind that. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have, right away after they've clicked on that ad, they go into a, another funnel, which can be done through setting up uh, custom audiences through Google Analytics, which we're gonna import then into Google Ads, and say if somebody's bought from us after clicking on this initial ad here, in which we know they're offline customer now, okay, and now they're an online customer, that we're gonna have every 30 days a different promotion that shows up, just like people, you know, in the offline world, people have used circulars or flyers, like newspapers with an insert, to keep getting people to come in because that stuff worked. The digital equivalent of that is to have a banner ad set that, that says that you're offering 10% off for Valentine's Day, only good for this month or this week. You run that ad, it gets a super high click through, and then it's gone. Next month, you have a different ad that shows up with a different you know, promotion. Spend $100, get 15% off, whatever, and you'll get a surge of orders for that. And you can build up, really, the lifetime value of that person. Now you've just got, you gotta pay you know, decent money to get into the habit of buying online. But instead of you know, buying $300, now you, they're buying 1,000. It has that kind of a dramatic impact if you could run different promotions online because that person is a frequent buyer offline anyway, and no, they're not just gonna take advantage of the promotion, and that's the only reason why they're buying. You're, you're giving them, you're keeping yourself at top of mind all the time to the point where you can have the top new, you know, in the clothing space, we would have the, the newest product that was in, and then keeping top of mind that way, and then having an incentive for them not to buy later, but buy now, because if you buy next week, you're not gonna get the 10% off, and through the combination of those two things, they're gonna buy way, 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 way more frequent than if you just had an ad that says, hey, remember us. You always gotta give them a reason to act on your display ads if you want good response from display advertising. And that's one main way to do it. And so for the next three years, you just have a system built up where one month you have this set of ads, the next month after that, you have another set of ads lined up and you just keep doing that. After a year, you can literally have your promotion from last February show up for that person again the next February, they won't remember that the ads were the same, trust me on that, to where you can have the whole thing automated. So you're spending a certain amount of money to get somebody which to buy, which you'll know they'll buy so much more times after that from your other follow-up ads that follow up the person after that uh, in a systematized basis. And it just works and works and works for you after that. So anyway, that's one use case that we commonly use here. Uh, the clothing space that was big, but that could be done for many different spaces. The other second one I'd like to uh, share with you that's very effective is we would use the set the beacons outside competitors' locations, walls, benches, stuff like that. 
So now this is very gray area, but technically speaking, if you, I talked about in other videos, you can market through custom audiences by putting the competitor's brand names and the website URLs into a custom audience so that Google lets you advertise to people who've been or searched for recently your competitor's sites, which works extremely well. Well, the offline equivalent of that would be to set up a web beacon here in this case, outside their business, but near it, near enough for the Bluetooth to still pick up their mobile ID to where nobody can see it. And now you have a stream of people who in the last 30 days went into your competitor's businesses that you can hit them with an ad, a web ad, on a banner ad, on any new sites that they go to, or on Facebook, or on LinkedIn, any of those sites. So yeah, it's very kind of sketchy, but respectively, it doesn't get any better than marketing to your competitors because they're either going to buy soon or they're, they're like, you know, the 10% chance is to be, you know, at least 10% chance they're going to buy soon. And if, and if they only buy once, that's your best audience. If they buy frequently, that's still your best audience because you want to steal away your best customers from your competitors. Those are the ones where you're, that's where all the money is in your market. So why not, if you can, go after them? And with the web beacon, you can't. As far as I under, excuse me, understand it, it's not illegal to put something outside of a building like that. Uh, I, again, I'm not a lawyer. You do your own research here. But once you do that, you pick up these mobile user IDs. Online, you can have an ad now that says, open account and show receipt for free item. So we did this in the spa space. I didn't do it. Um, so respectively, with that, we had the beacons set up in places where people from the other high-end spas in the area where we could find out who they were. We actually set up, and if you're going to do this, set up a custom audience, the way that I said it, with all your direct competitions, brand names, product names, trade names, legal names, website URLs in that custom audience so that you can also market to people who search for or were on your competitor sites as well. You, and, and that could be its own stream of traffic, but you also got a stream of traffic in which you will get in front of people who were physically near your competitor's locations and have an ad like that that incentivizes them that, hey, if you're a spa goer, show us your receipt and we'll give you, you know, a huge discount for your first time here so you could check out how good it is. Shouldn't always seem desperate, but our, our product's so amazing that if you prove to us that you'll, you're a person who goes to spas a lot, just bring in your receipt the first time, you know, you get 50% off. It's enough of a reason to actually give a crap about your ad. That should always be your uh, goal for them. To, it has to be good enough. You got to put yourself in the user's shoes to see an ad and want to stop everything you're doing to click on that ad. And that ad right there will be and is. Okay. So respectively, along with that, yes, it costs you know all of your profit or even there more more than your what you're going to make in general. So we're losing money on the initial one, but that get that person who goes to the spa five times a year, that customer, in that case, with the show me your receipt thing, so it doesn't get people who are already your customer to come in and where you're giving away your profit that way. Um, and in which, well, you if somebody doesn't come, you know, obviously to your spa, you would still take them, but because you know the people go to the competitor spa already, it seems super, super relevant it doesn't seem creepy because they don't know that you they went to that spot anyway. Um, it just seems super relevant. By the way, in sales, you always want the person to think they came up with the idea themselves. In this case, it's like, wow, I'm a genius. I found somebody who's going to make, because I'm so awesome and I like spas and I understand the value of them, that they are have the going to give me the red carpet treatment to try their spa, which is now the best spa in town. And they want me to try it first, which the whole thing was planned obviously from the beginning in this case. But uh, you know, they're potentially worth three thousand dollars of future re revenue from you uh, for all the people that were on that list. If you could just come in the first time, you could give the whole thing for free away at the beginning because you know the next nine times you're going to get full price. Assuming you have something good quality to offer that actually is better. You absolutely want to do this because obviously it'll work even more so. If it's crappier, you know, that's 
it's questionable. <laughs> but if you have something that you feel is better than the competition, this is the best way to do it if you're, work, if you're doing offline business. So that's one other use case here. The last example here before I wrap this up is the you could to make money or a system to make money that I actually have used before. You can sell the list of the mobile user IDs to different businesses or obviously you could just use them in general. Um, I talked about this down here. Basically, there was somebody that I know that had, if you th think about it, back in the day, the taxi drivers in different tourist areas, those were the people that all the people that sold the tourists in the area would try to bribe or whatever in a situation when everybody, so and everybody would want to go to the taxi driver to get them to any new people who were coming into town because they always first get on a taxi to recommend their club. The, you know, people always say, hey, you're from here, what's the, what's the, what's the best club? That club, club would get a ton more business and it would you know, restrict what other clubs were able to get, choke the comp competition at the same time as propped you up. And so they would do all kinds of things like kickbacks were common, very unethical, whatnot. But um, in that situation, you know, in that case, everybody wants to talk to the people that were just coming into town. You could, you could uh, target people who, would, let's say, bought a uh, hotel in your city with your ads. That's possible to do. But a lot of times people aren't doing that. And so if you wanted to get everybody or a lot more in general, you could obviously target people who had the web beacon in each taxi in that whole city. That's ex an extremely, extremely valuable list to anybody who is in travel, uh, uh, doing tours, anything else like that. Um, one of the main places that actually sold the list to was the tour company because everybody that as soon as they get off the pl you know, plane or whatever, in a lot of these places they have tour people out front just begging to take you on, onto a tour at a lot of these international locations especially. And so in this case, as soon as they got in the taxi or whatnot, you could start marketing to them for the first two days. That two day window is the whole time in which they're the valuable. And so, in, so knowing exactly when they show up and they exactly need the, the, the service and when they don't, now you could start to make money. That list is so valuable that if I, like I said, it's going back to the beginning. Your goal is to target so well, eventually or short term, that no matter what, you know, where I'm at, it's gonna make money and almost anything I say. If you just had a crappy ad that said, we offer tours that are amazing. You would still make money because the, the ad's so targeted. But so I know that in that case, the, the tour company was making uh, hella bucks doing that, but that wasn't the only place you could sell the list to. Now you could sell it to all the bars, the nightclubs, hotels. So you, if you want to get a business going out of it, and, and don't, and that would be a business in it itself because I know for a fact in that particular space it worked which makes sense, you need to think of what is, there's got, in every market almost, there's got to be somebody that basically, if you knew they did X, Y, Z, they, at least 10% of the time, which is what this is about, they would buy X, Y, Z product, as long as it was pitched to them and it wasn't that bad of, of a pitch. And then that's what you're going after. And sometimes you don't know until you ask the business owners, just take a survey. Hey, is there certain people that you know if you got in front of, they would buy at least 10% of the time no matter what? And some people won't have an answer, but a ton will. So that, that was how, that's how I would start the business if I were you. You might just already know from obviously being in the market. And anybody will talk to you if you say you've got people, once you know what it is for one market, you talk to all the people in that market and you just say, hey, if I could get you a list of all the people who were get on the, that were in a taxi, the minute they got in the taxi, every single time a traveler came in, would you want that? And if you say nothing else, that, that you'll get everybody basically 50% or more to get on a phone call with you. So it's not hard to sell it. And so that's, that, that's what makes it a really great opportunity that can make a ton of money right away. I told you about the hospital situation where they had a beacon there where anybody was near the helipad, those lists were sold to a broker, which are then sold to uh, an, an agency basically, which can then do it for a um, personal injury lawyer. One that specialized in, in, in accidents where you normally would get 
uh, life lighted or whatever in the hel hel helicopter to start with. And so, but and in that case, if you're the one out there getting those lists, in, in that particular space, it's definitely going to be more saturated than, you know, 98% of different markets uh, because there's so much darn money in that space and people are already doing it. If you get it to work for one market, it will work the entire, over the whole, entire country. You basically could, that one system, once you know the ad works for that system, you could sell it to 500 different people in that market and just do it the same way every time. Um, but it, again, in that particular case, you just got to say, I'm just saying you're a personal injury lawyer in that case where you know they've gotten life lighted wouldn't work that well, even though it's so targeted, it probably, like I said, will, even if you have a crap offer, we never are going to settle for a crap offer saying that we actually specialize in, uh, you know, accidents where your, sp your spine is, uh, gets severed or whatnot. And not everybody has that that's life lighted, but you know, respectively, there's more than 1% and the cases are worth 150 grand to 300 grand, whatever, that even if, you know, three out of 100 are doing it, which really you're looking for at least 1% out of your targeted list to need what you have. In that case, you can make money if it's at least 10%, now you're really making money. Or it could be closer to 1% and make money if you're, what you're selling is ex super expensive, like five figures or whatever, uh, or at least four figures, you just say that we're a specialist. If it's not 10% or more, and it's more like 1% of your list, now you just, you've got to speak to the 1% more directly. We specialize in, in, in spinal injuries, get you what you're, what you're worth. And so the person who sees that, even though it's one out of 100, you're going to get 10 times the response. Now the math still works out. In the uh, tour space, you don't really have to do that much because they're already gonna, either going to be interested in a tour or not. You show you know, the different things that, that you have, but uh, you have some offer there where if, we're offering a special prize for November. And if you'd like somebody to uh, you know, reach out to you about this, just fill out this form and we'll give you, you know, this promo rate, which you know, we normally don't offer, but we offer. And it's just enough of a differentiation there to actually get that person to not say, hmm, that's nice. And yes, I would like to go on a tour to respond not only to you and you only because you now separated yourself out, but do it now. Because otherwise people procrastinate and the more people procrastinate, even if they have good intentions to come back, the less likely they are to buy in general. This is just how PPC works. Anything you can do to build urgency and uh, instant or, or, or immediate demand to prevent procrastination, which you do through saying that you're only going to get this for so long. And if you don't do it now, you're not going to get this is the main way that you build up the, the urgency sky high to prevent most of the procrastinators from procrastinating. You're not going to, you'll make, you know, basically half or a third as much money because a lot of people will say they're going to come back on Friday when they get paid or whatever. And then the money spent on something else, they forget. They may have, like I said, good intentions to come back. They just, stuff happens. So, unfortunately, nobody likes being hard sold. So we give up something to get them to respond right away. We will give you X responding now versus later. And then it's up to them. So anyway, that's the whole thing in a nutshell about how to use what, you know, web beacons to mint, you know, cash for your business, uh, for your own business, for a business that you create. I hope you liked the video. I have a ton of other money-making PPC strategy videos on this channel. If you want to make a, a ton of money with PPC, you should check some of my other videos out. I have a blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog with step-by-step -step instructions on how to build campaigns that are guaranteed to work basically every time in which I use on our clients' campaigns here to guarantee their results. So if you like information along those kind of lines, you can find it there. If you have any questions about web beacons, stuff that I mentioned, uh, stuff that I didn't mention and you think I should, leave me a comment down below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment on this channel within a day or two. And uh, with all that said, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, Ian helps you, some of you guys to make some money at it that are brave enough to go out there and do it. I do hope to see you on my next video about another strategy here, PPC strategy in, in another day or two.